Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. In this week's episode, we're going to DIY rust proof the frame of our Jeep Wrangler. I'll explain a little bit as to why we're doing that. And then in our tip segment, I'm going to share with you some ideas on how you can save some money. So let's get to it. Why, why, why would I want to do the rust proofing on my Jeep frame myself? Well, if you're not new to the channel, you know I've covered corrosion and rust proofing in a couple other videos, so I may reference some of the content covered in those videos. If you're new to the channel, I'll have the links to those episodes in the description section of this video. But you may also want to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. So. In those early episodes, I talked about how there's corrosion occurring on the exterior of the aluminum panels. I talked about the difference between corrosion and rust. I talked about the reasons why I chose back then to go with Crown. Crown offers a warranty and that sort of thing. But when dealing with the corrosion issue, I inquired with Crown as to what they would cover with their warranty with respect to the aluminum oxidizing the aluminum corrosion where the paint was starting to lift off the body panels because when I was looking at the crown rust proofing warranty language they talked about perforation and I thought well the aluminum panels aren't perforating they're just oxidizing on the surface causing the paint to bubble so they did reply back and uh, they said something to the effect that well, you know, in time the aluminum can perforate and that they would protect it for anything where the perforation occurs from the inside of the panel out. And I still don't know what kind of conditions and time is required for that aluminum to actually perforate. Maybe it would, maybe by the time that does there wouldn't be anything else left on the Jeep because the oxidization of the aluminum is at the surface and it's causing the paint to lift and that's about it. And so I just thought while I was in communication with them, I'd verify that the frame is still covered because that is steel, that will rust, that will perforate. And to my surprise, they mentioned that no, the frame isn't covered in their warranty. And that's when I thought, well, maybe I made a mistake to go with Crown. I was, uh, one of the main selling points was the warranty. And with the Wrangler JL, with all the aluminum panels, there isn't really going to be a lot of perforation from the inside of the body panels out because that's not how the aluminum would oxidize and especially now that I've got three years worth of coating of the product on the inside of the doors that's not getting washed off so I wasn't really worrying about that I was worrying about the frame because I did start seeing some rust appearing on the frame because of all the kilometers I put on the off-roading I do the product would probably rub off a little sooner than their annual application requires which still doesn't give me a warranty. So I started thinking maybe that was a mistake to go at Crown. How feasible is it if I were to just to apply a rust proofing product to the frame myself when I felt it needed it? Is it going to be that easy? And can I do it cheaper? Given that I'm cheaper, cheaper TV, it's only natural that I would ask that. <laughs> All of that is what this video is going to address. So let's get to the video. You can see here at the leading edge of the axle and at some frame weld locations, rust is showing through even though I have had this frame rust proof. Now I have been spot spraying some of these areas, but now that I know with the off-roading I do and the miles I put on that the product comes off easily and the reapplication of coats costs about $90 plus tax Canadian. I'm going to investigate doing this myself. And here we have the frame of my wife's 2012 JK and it looks like it could use a little attention as well. And given that I'm going to be doing the rust proofing myself, I'm going to be paying close attention to the leading edges of things like the skid plates and the front track bar and the such. So before we get started, let's talk about what kind of rust proofing we're going to use. 
Although there are many rust proofing products on the market, the product that I chose to go with is called Fluid Film. Now you'll find many reviews on the forums as well as YouTube videos that espouse the virtues of Fluid Film. I'm not saying this is one that's any better than the other, but based on what I have read and researched, it's a good one to use and it's readily available. And another and similar product is called Wool Wax, which is also a lanolin based product like fluid film, except that this is a black color and it's a little thicker in application. And not to be outdone, fluid film then produced a black color of their product as well, given that the black color of the rust proofing seemed to be quite popular. Mind you, from my experience, once you spray on the rust proofing in this cream color version, it begins to just level out and look black and shiny anyway. Also, the product is available in aerosol cans with a special applicator tip that has a hose-like nozzle with a spray type end on the end so that you could feed it into the frame members and spray the inside of your frame with it or to have access to difficult places to reach. And again, it's also available in black. Now to do the rust proofing myself economically, I chose to go with the one gallon form factor, but that does require that I have access to a compressor and a spray bottle, which are readily available on Amazon and have good reviews like the ones I show here. All the links to these products are available in the description. However, as you will see, the spray gun that I had access to during the creation of this video was from Princess Auto and until October 24th, 2021, it's available for this crazy discount price. Also, at the time that I was doing my rust proofing, the fluid film was on sale at Princess Auto for $70. So here is the process by which this product works. You start with your sheet of steel. And then you have your rust proofing product. You can apply these with a brush or as what we are going to do we're going to use a sprayer but aerosol cans are also available for those who don't have a compressor. Now once that the product is applied to the steel things like oxygen, salt and moisture are not allowed to come in contact with the steel because of the barrier provided by this rust proofing product. So let's have a look at how this stuff goes on. Well the first thing I decided to do to make cleanup easy is to put a layer of poly down on the driveway and then drive the Jeep on top of that. And to give me more room underneath the Jeep for spraying I would jack up the Jeep and put four jack stands underneath the axles. And you can see here the Jeep is on the jack stands and you can see also here how much room there is to work. Although it isn't absolutely necessary, I recommend removing all the tires so that you'll have better access to the underside of the Jeep. I also chose to remove the front wind skirt underneath the front bumper to give me better access to the components there. And here's what it looks like and it's time to get spraying. For starters, it's advisable that you keep the can of the product in a hot bucket of water so that it has time to soften up. Then you can just open the can and stir up the product so it's nice and smooth. And I used a paint can pouring lid to allow me to pour the product nice and neatly into the spray can. So depending on the temperature of the product, your spray gun and your compressor, you would set it at 75 to maybe 100 psi, whatever works for your equipment, and begin. To protect your rotors from getting any product on them, you can cover them with a plastic bag. And now here we are in the front passenger side wheel well, and it's time to just start spraying the frame and all the other metal components. I try to keep the spray gun about a foot away from whatever I'm spraying. Here's a look at before, and here's a look at after. And now we move to the rear passenger wheel well, cover the rotor, and start spraying. Before and after. 
And now to the front driver's side wheel well, before and after. And now the last of the wheel wells, the driver's side rear wheel well, before and after. And now I get under the Jeep and start to spray all the steel components of the frame and suspension. I'll start at the front and then work my way around. You know, with the poly on the ground, it really made it easy just to slide along. The product atomizes nicely to get into all the components that I can't see or reach, but it didn't seem to travel far. And while I'm under here, I'm going to pay particular attention to the forward facing components of skid plates, frame, suspension, and axles. It was really easy to get under the Jeep and actually have access to most of the components that I needed to spray with just the spray gun. At this point, there's a real feeling of satisfaction as you see the product coating the whole frame and the underside of your Jeep, knowing that you're protecting it. And now with all the major components being sprayed with the spray gun, it's time to get inside the frame using this wand with a tip that emits a spray. Have a look. You insert this wand inside the holes everywhere you see in the frame and then just slide it into the frame and then spray the product as you remove the wand from the frame. You can also use the wand to reach the areas that the spray gun didn't hit the first time like along the top of the frame for example. And now that is it. Now, if you did have holes in your door panels and your body panels from prior rust proofing jobs, you could use them to add more product or find holes that already exist in the doors. Or if you wanted to, you could even remove door panels and the such to have access to the inside panels of your doors. Now we're just focusing on the frame for this video. And yep, I wasn't kidding. We are done. We have got a good coating of fluid film all over our frame, our skid plates, our suspension components, our steering components. Everything that's steel underneath the Jeep is coated with fluid film and protected for the winter. From my perspective, this really was easier than I thought it was going to be and it really didn't make that much of a mess either. With the poly down, that caught most of any misting that came from the gun and it didn't travel too far off the edge of that poly sheet. So let's go on to the tip segment where I'll give you a cost breakdown and some money saving tips. Hey, I hope that was helpful. Now let's talk about some money saving tips. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. What makes doing your own rust proofing doubly easy is if you also have another vehicle to do while you have the setup. So I finished my wife's Jeep and now I'm gonna do mine. But let's talk about the cost. To have Crown do the rust proofing of a frame costs $90 plus tax Canadian. I bought the gallon jug of fluid film for $70. Now given that I can do at least two Jeeps and still have some of the product left over, I could safely say it cost me $35 of the product. So all in all, I think that that's a significantly cheaper cost to rust proof your Jeep yourself for just $35 rather than $90 Plus you get the satisfaction that comes with looking after your own Jeep. Not to mention your wife's or your friend's Jeep and the in-law's car while you're at it. And now let's hear what our subscribers have to say. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from our video on the extra storage provided by the net bag that fits between the two front seats.
Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, here's a small tip. It's frustrating when it happens, trust me it will happen. The cheap plastic hooks will break when the net is weighed. Snap them with the pliers and use small inexpensive metal carabiners or metal o-rings instead to attach the upper two strings to the headrest post. Happened to me and a few other friends of mine. Change the hook and it's a fantastic and quick place to store some small things. Signed, Allo Pandur. Hey Allo Pandur, thank you for a tip. I'm sure a lot of our subscribers are going to find that helpful. And if you have any tips, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below as we may use them in an upcoming episode. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting and if you did, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Until next week, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.